Greeting everyone to this wonderful masterclass on TPWS. I welcome all of you on behalf of Railway Academy and my team. And uh, before we start the masterclass, I'll just uh, I would like to briefly introduce Railway Academy to people who are uh, new to uh, Railway Academy's name. So we are a employability focused. Uh, training company working in railway industry to help the industry create uh, skilled manpower in collaboration with uh, top universities in India. We work with two universities in India, Raidbara University Mohali and Ramaya University of Applied Sciences, where we conduct a one year postgraduate diploma in railway signaling and telecommunication. In the last three years, we've trained more than 200 uh, engineers in railway signaling. In addition to that, we are uh, also conducting uh, many online training programs uh, from OHE to RAMS, also conducting IRSE uh, uh, module training programs, electronic interlocking. Uh, we have a, a 100 plus hours certificate program on signaling training for uh, working professionals and freshers who are looking at building career in uh, railway signaling. So uh, we, uh, we have uh, some of uh, India's top railway experts working with us. Uh, Dr. Raja Gondon, uh, Mr. B. Sambi Reddy, then Sandeep Pararia. So we are a company uh, looking at uh, adding value in, to training and mentoring uh, with the help of our eminent panel experts. So uh, today, we, in order to... Uh, provide knowledge to uh, fellow professionals in railway signaling industry. We have, uh, we have uh, decided to share the knowledge through this masterclass on TPWS. And I would like to invite Mr. Ajay Singh, who's my colleague, to introduce our eminent speakers and uh, trainers for today. So, Ajay sir. Hello. Yes. Sir. Good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm Ajay Singh from the Railway Academy. And uh, I would like to introduce you all to uh, the people who are involved in the uh, this training session. Uh, I welcome you all. I'm pleased to introduce three very, very prominent and experienced speakers who have been working in Indian railways for more than 30 years in signaling and telecommunications and have contributed very, very prominently in many projects of immense importance to Indian railways. We all know that high speed trains are the today's requirement and safety is the major issue in increasing the speed. There are various technologies working for the automation, which is essential to run the trains at high speed. The three speakers which I'm going to introduce you today is are Mr. Mahesh Yadav, He'll explain you about the concept of TPWS to you. Mr. Arun Sakshenaji, who will explain about the functioning of the TPWS and Mr. LK Mansukhani ji, who will give you designing aspects of the system. So I'm introducing one by one, all the prominent speaker. First, I'm, I'm starting with the Mr. Mahesh Yadav. He is an IRC officer of batch 2008. He retired in 2016. He is having more than six, 40 years of experience in designing, installation, testing, commissioning, maintenance, etc. He has developed and approved uh, many system architecture of software, embedded software, and safety critical and secure systems. He is a member of uh, uh, I, 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 IRST India and uh, IRT, Institution of Railway Transport India. He is also a member of Institution of Urban Transport India. To his credit, he has got many publications. He has, developed, he has uh, given a paper on the development of railway signaling system, train protection and warning systems, uh, railway signaling technologies, railway signaling preparation of schemes, uh, online monitoring of railway stocks, Signaling and telecommunication system overview on uh, in the Eastern dedicated uh, freight corridor. 
so uh, mr mahesh yadav will be taking care of uh, explaining you all the concepts which is pertaining to the tpws the second and uh, the uh, very prominent officer of uh, indian railways mr arun saxena uh, i'm going to introduce him and uh, mr arun saxena is a 1978 batch graduation graduate engineering graduate and he passed out uh, engineering with a very very uh, high marks he has he has earned gold medal in the in his btech degree and after btech he joined irsc uh, railway indian railway services as signal engineer in 1978 he is having nearly 40 years of experience in designing installation testing commissioning maintenance and operation of signaling and train control and telecommunication system he has developed and approved design system architecture of software embedded systems signal plans for safety critical and secure system along with network it application for diagnostic management and controls he is fellow member of ie iit irst and irsc london he has presented many many papers in national and international conferences uh mr arun saxena has many 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 high posts in indian railway such as south east central railway he worked as a principal cst then he was drm in kota division 2015 to 2017 and uh, he was general manager in north central railway uh, 2015 to 2017 and thereafter he joined as a uh, advisor to the railway railtel corporation 2017 to june 2020 uh, mr saxena has written many papers and which has been awarded uh, in uh, 2018 he has written uh, unescap workshop on co development of optical fiber in 2013 he has given a uh, paper in austria on digital excel counters 2011 he has, he has given paper in tokyo japan uh, with uh, for the western dfc project with jika the third speaker in this uh, 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 session is mr lalit mansukhani he is a uh, 1991 batch officer of irsc joined indian railway as a signal engineer presently working as a adrm he has been to many uh, he has hold many posts during this last past 30 years has been to deputation on uk railways rdso as a general administration in research and development then he has he has contributed very valuably in the train control system solution in 2012 when indian railway was struggling and uh, he developed update and developed and update and customized radio communication based system like etcs ects level 2 in 2012 when 2g and 4g were uh, in 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 line he came up with a secure and efficient innovative communication system obviating need for 2g 4g and development took off with quantum leap with numerous other innovation he got opportunity to showcase indigenous made in india aatmanirbhar bharat train collision avoidance system tcas which is going to be adopted by the railway uh, ministry of railways to he presented his uh, uh, whole work to the honorable prime minister of india he has been awarded railway week award uh, minister of railway award many merit certificate he has to his uh, credit and he has contributed uh, very prominently to indigenous train control system line capacity friendly system needed radio communication he has innovated line capacity enhancement friendly design and substitute to 2g 4g so these three very very prominent railway officers are with us to explain uh, the tpws concept i will i i will now hand it over to mr uh, sumit kanu sumit thank you sir so uh, so we can uh, sir i would request uh, uh, our uh, uh, speakers for this today's sessions to uh, share their presentation and uh, start inaugurate the session 
मिस्टर महेश यादव यस सर सो आई एम मेकिंग यू को होस्ट सर सो सो यस सर यू आर दी को होस्ट नाउ सो यू कैन शेयर दी प्रेजेंटेशन participants i have a request uh, we'll be taking uh, your questions towards the end of the session so i would request everybody to share their questions and queries in the chat box we'll be taking up your questions towards the end my sir Yes, sir. Are you? Uh... So kindly unmute your uh, microphone. Yes, sir. Please unmute your microphone. I think there is some issue at Mahesh sir, Mahesh Yadav sir's end. I'm not able to hear his voice. सुमित ये सर आई थिंक व्हाट आई टू एट माय सर एंड सर व्हाट आई जस्ट आई थिंक आई विल स्टार्ट एंड देन यू कैन फॉलो लेटर परफेक्ट सर परफेक्ट राइट ओके यू कैन शेयर योर स्क्रीन सर आई मेड यू कोहोस्ट इफ इट इज ओके फॉर योर शेड्यूल देन आई विल स्टार्ट ये सर प्लीज 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 गो एट So am I audible? Yes, sir. Perfect. Okay. Uh, first of all, good evening to all of for you, and uh, good morning. Good evening to uh, people here uh, who have been who have shown interest in this very very important area of uh, automatic train protection. I will start with a very very important uh, uh, thinking that in the process of signaling in the last almost one twenty five years. did we real for really forget the driver and that is what is the precisely the today's focus on the subject we have not forgotten the driver we have done a lot of activity a lot of initiatives have been taken in the past so that uh, the systems work uh, work in a safe manner and the trains are operated with the higher speed closer headway and uh, more flexibility in uh, in in any part of the world and that's why we, we say that very clearly that signaling is a concept so the today's topic uh, is basically on on board automatic train protection system which we are calling as train protection and warning system tpws i will highlight how it has evolved how the term tpws has come out 
from where, where the TPWS has emerged, what are the TPWS meanings in different parts of the world, and uh, <clears throat> that will be my st st strategy to work on. So now I'll take you to the uh, 19th century when the number of trains were very, very less. We had hardly any trains in the section. We had hardly three to four trains, maybe in a section, and the speeds were very, very low. So therefore, there, there was no need of ATP felt at the, that stage. Later on, when the number of trains increased uh, to a very large number and the, the speeds went on increasing, the number of trains went up. <clears throat> The number of trains went up and the speeds went up. The headway also became shorter and shorter. We had to have a strategy so as to work out a, a manner in which the trains can be run properly with full safety. And therefore, <coughs> the intention was to, to work on the signals, then to interlocking, and then to other concepts. So ultimately, what 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 will emerge during my discussion that there are gaps, there are centered gaps in the system which are between the controller and the driver, and those gaps have to be controlled. <clears throat> that during the webinar, I would like to cover a brief exposure just to bring out the concept, the brief exposure to railway signaling and train control systems, why these are required and what are their functions, and how signaling really grew in India and what was the impact of that growth of signaling in India. Then, uh, before we go to the automatic train protection, there was a method of doing signaling, and we were dependent on the on the driver. So therefore, we have to understand what are the basic uh, line side signaling systems and their functions. And then comes the later uh, version of automatic onboard automatic train protection systems in India, with the story of its first trial components and functions and features. This will be uh, in in the in the presentation. Then we come to the concept of uh, moving from conventional system to the state of the art universal interoperable systems and then going to the indian indigenous AT, which you mentioned as the train collision avoidance system uh, i would like to at this stage thank uh, the the organizers uh, who have uh, very liberal i think uh, liberally uh, uh, introduced all of us including mr mansukhani this is the area in which indigenous atp is the area in which mr mansukhani has come and he will be introducing the concept of indigenous atp and how it emerged from other ATPs. Then <laughs> during the course of my, my discussion, I will also talk about train protection warning system and experience in India and the train collision warning system, which is an indigenous effort, factors for design and implementation, which will be brought out by Mr. Mansukhani. And <clears throat> I believe that this is only the first kickoff uh, webinar. I would request all the participants, I can see that more than almost 150 or 160 participants are there. I would request all participants to kindly send their specific requirements, specific queries, so that we can conceive a, a proper course in a manner so that we can meet the requirement. The subject is quite large. It cannot be covered in two hours. It cannot be covered in even 20 hours. So the subject is quite large. You must draft your questions very clearly, draft your requirements very carefully, so that we can have a continued learning system through uh, people like Mr. Ajay Singh and his academy so that the, the, the show continues and we are able to give uh, a very, very strong impetus to the concept of skill India. In fact, I would, I would like the India to be the hub of signaling expertise in the world. And for that purpose, the Rail Academy is working on that. Now I'll start my concept for how, why is signaling required? So you can still look at the picture on the right hand side. This picture very clearly shows why it is required. On the road, you can have, many to many vehicles but on the on the track side you can see there's hardly any vehicle and that precisely is the is the problem there because the trains run on fixed rails and cannot change their path by steering away but the road vehicle can do that the trains run at higher speeds at closer headway with heavy trailing loads and require large braking distances large braking distances means that you will need to break the train much ahead before before the, any obstruction is perceived and therefore, a dependable train control system is required. And that uh, control system is able to display to the control local pilot or the driver sufficiently in advance what is the situation or condition ahead so that he can operate his train safely, even if there is a train ahead, which is uh, in the case of automatic signaling or even in moving block. Therefore, <clears throat> this uh, particular uh, entire concept of um, train movement is ensured through a signal, which we have been doing for the last uh, 125 years, 
and now we talk about uh, talk about this as a movement authority which has to be shown on the cap inside the cap now i will just uh, briefly highlight the functions of the railway signaling systems first and foremost function of any railway signaling train control system is to provide high level of safety in train operation we cannot we just cannot we cannot afford even one accident in the entire life cycle of the equipment and therefore the design criteria the design philosophy is very stringent and the safety is embedded into the entire thing you have to run trains safely that doesn't mean that you stop all the trains you must run the maximum number of trains at the highest speed following a close headway so that you are able to uh, improve the throughput and you are able to move uh, ma maximum number of people or maximum amount of freight in in from uh, from uh, from the origin to the destination point and therefore uh, apart from the safety the other function which means that they have to run more number of trains on the same uh, track uh, at higher speeds and you have to allow uh, uh, especially in the yards you must have seen uh, major yards like delhi and howrah and uh, uh church gate and bombay central yeah, there are a lot of parallel movements taking place without uh, trains colliding with each other and therefore some uh, this is one of the important functions of uh, signaling which is simultaneous parallel movements in yard with isolation for efficient and flexible train operations this is very very important because without this the train operations cannot be done one of the foremost thing which has emerged and which is very critically uh, affecting uh, affecting train operations in the northern region of the country are the inclement weather inclement weather conditions uh, and uh, these conditions you must have observed the trains are, have to crawl physically crawl in, in a manner that you are you are able to ensure the first function that is safety but you have to still run now because of inclement weather and there is no an uh, additional aid available to the driver or to the loco pilot you have to have run the trains at a control speed so that you don't collide and for that purpose atp is, is, uh, the automatic train protection system which are inside the cab come into our uh, of help and these are the aids given to the driver which allows the train to be run at the maximum permissible speed even in, in the case of inclement weather and last but not the least is the one of the most important functions of signaling is it is monitoring on real time basis all the signaling function assets for the purpose of three things first thing is the passenger information which we are able to actuate through our train management systems second one is the train control and management because the train control and management has to be done by the railway operations department they need the real time information and third one is uh, which we have been really uh, not done much work on is the condition based predictive maintenance so that we are able to ensure a zero defect situation for the purpose of train operations now coming to the issue of safety now how safety is achieved in different scenarios so, <coughs> the as you as i mentioned that uh, safety in train operation is the primary function how it is achieved at the station at station we have got track circuits we have got interlocking between signals and points and level crossing and slots as uh, slot means say you are if you are entering into somebody else's area you must have a control coming in from that area into your area i am trying to explain in a slightly brief, uh, simple manner so that the people who have no experience on signaling will also understand if you are entering into my house you need a permission to enter my house right therefore this uh, concept of slot is there that in the case of you are entering through the area of or you are trying to enter into the area of uh, some other cabin or some other control center then you have to have a slot from that so that's why slot also is interlocked then between stations how do we ensure train if we ensure only one train in the section in the case of absolute block system in the case of absolute block system of working only one train is allowed between two stations but in the case of automatic block signaling we have divided the block section into small small track sections fully signaled for the purpose of automatic block signaling where we allow the train to come to the next track section which is clear of all obstacles then we have a typical situation in all the countries i'll say the level crossing or the grade crossing is available in all the countries and this crossing is done for the purpose of the local people living in that area to cross from one side which where their house is are there to the other side where their working area is there or factory is there or fields are there and therefore level crossing is an integral part of the railway system and this integral part therefore is the is the source of obstruction for the purpose of train running and this train operation <coughs> running train train running has to be safe and therefore again you have to close the level crossing gate lock it before you allow any train to come into it and that is what is called the safety at level crossings which is uh, given by by interlocking the level crossing with gate 
and we also have systems which give approach warning and for uh, to, to the road user as well as to the gateman so that he is able to close the gate in time now coming to the first and foremost thing which we are able to help the driver is the multiple aspect color light signals this is the first aid we give to the driver so that he is able to able to stop short of any obstruction all of us must understand that in case the driver fails in case the driver fails today you will have a collision you will have an accident that is for sure therefore in the earlier days there were signals which are lower quadrant signals where the visibility was not very clear very very poor not very adequate and the 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 driver or was not or able not able to properly locate the signal at times in the night or in in foggy weather and therefore uh, there were many cases of accident on account of uh, poor visibility and we believe that uh, once we give multiple aspect color light signal that means that you are warning the driver to stop much before he is required to stop before reaching any red signal in fact uh, passing a red signal in the case of indian railway concept and is a crime you will be removed from service the driver will be removed from service therefore he has to stop short of the red red signal and therefore in the case of multiple aspect uh, cls we pre warn the driver by giving a yellow which is about 1 km before it then double yellow one another 1 km before it which is a indi clear indication to the driver that he is required to stop so this is the only uh, benefit we have been able to give in the last so many years to the uh, to the local pilot and driver so that he is able to control his train properly and uh, on the first question which will emerge is why uh, if the driver is so vulnerable why accidents are not taking place so argument is very very simple we are putting on all our uh, trains which are running at more than 100 kmph or maybe more than 90 kmph we are putting two drivers and we strongly believe that in fact it is a, it is a proved, proven fact statistically also that it, the, both the drivers will not fail on the same day at the same time on the same location this is the philosophy and based on that the the probability of a of a driver passing the signal danger is quite remote then can we come to the issue of uh, uh, efficiency in operations information and uh, proper controlling which uh, is in the control center and lastly but not the least which is the uh, today's subject is the onboard train protection system which you have been calling a train protection warning system which is an area which is uh, on which we have to work for the next uh, at least two decades this is a typically for the people who are who have seen the not seen the system this is a typical uh, single line station diagram which uh, indicates to you how the, the signals are uh, located how the track circuits are there how the point signals track circuits are interlocked uh, at, at the in the from the cabin <clears throat> now i mentioned in my agenda item that i will show you what is the impact as you look at the entire thing you will see that the there has been a tremendous growth of signaling on indian railways and this growth has been as high as 8000% in the case of electronic interlocking which is unheard of anywhere in the world 8000% percent from 2002 to 2017 15 years you had a growth of 8000% that means something like uh, 55 to 60% every year yeah, that has been the growth and this electronic interlocking has 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 that is that could be a separate subject of discussion but that more foremost uh, objective or benefit which has emerged from electronic interlocking is very very fast commissioning very very effective way of simulated testing and it is quite in, in uh, free from interference the interference possibility is quite low uh, we have spent uh, about 30 years earlier prior to electronic and long 25 years earlier where there was a bigger problem in the on the indian railways on account of certain reasons there was a tendency to interfere with the relay interlocking which we have been doing in the past for last 60 70 years and that interference with the relay interlocking is 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 a, is a hazardous situation it is not acceptable and that can lead to an accident so you can see that there have been this phenomenal increase in the, the activities uh, and you could just see the impact now you look at the figure position on the left hand side that is the how the signaling has grown over the 1981 to 2015 and how the number of uh, accidents have come down specifically talking of collisions in the year 1961 6061 there were 130 collisions 130 collisions in the country and today uh, the last data which I got is of 2015. It is only five X collisions, and these five collisions we are, in fact, Mr. Mansukani is focusing on on these five collisions. To eliminate these five collisions, we need train collision avoidance system. 
Now comes the second function of uh, the signaling, which is the cost-effective line capacity measures. Now, line capacity measures, uh, right from the beginning, in fact, started. Uh, if you remember, in the in the 19th century, uh, the physical verification of the line or loop line or the main line at a station was done physically, manually by the station master, and that was leading to loss of time, loss of uh, capacity, and therefore track circuiting emerged as the first. First, uh, I'll say device which allowed uh, safe train operations, uh, safe reception there after in the yard without consuming much of uh, physical verification activity. Then came the issue of interlocking. Earlier, even interlocking was not there. Prior to 1925-30, there was no even interlocking, and there, because the speeds were low and uh, the trains were able to control themselves, the trains were shorter, the braking distance was shorter. The, the, they were able to control and stop short of the outer signal. And uh, and accidents could be prevented, but as the train lengths increased, speeds increased, headways are used, the interlocking became a requirement. And as the yard becomes more and more complex, in fact, many of our junction yards are very very complex so with multiple direction movements, and therefore interlocking was a must. You can you can imagine that if somebody has to physically verify one route, how much time it will take? You will take one train in one hour. But with the interlocking, you take one train in 30 seconds, and that is what is the line capacity improvement which you have been able to give through interlocking. Then came the uh, system of block working. Block working, if you have, uh, in the earlier days, it used to be with a paper line here or some kind of a, some uh, staff which was given to the local pilot to go into the section, depending on the telephone call between the two station masters. The, later on came the after some accidents were noticed. Later on, came, uh, I think the 1920s, uh, the Niels Ball Toker instrument was introduced in India, and uh, this Toker instrument, many of you, many of us have seen, is still operating in many parts of the country. The, these were uh, required to. In fact, the system of token working is that you uh, you have to extract a token to enter into a block section, and this token has to be carried by the local pilot, which is given by the station master. Now the system of block working is that uh, only one token can come out, either at station A or at station B. It cannot come at both the ends, and therefore this uh, token of taking out, taking out and putting in the pouch and giving it to the local pilot was time-consuming, and therefore we evolved a system of tokenless block working that without any, without touching any, <coughs> uh, without giving any uh, tangible uh, to token to the driver, we were able to lower a signal. Uh, take off a signal for the driver, and he was able to run the trains. Then came the concept of as the trains uh, density increased, the, the even this tokenless became a, an issue uh, because the tokenless also requires certain block operation time, and therefore the concept of block proving by axle counter with non-cooperative feature and automatic uh, train online feature and automatic train on train out of section feature. These three features are very important. These three features. Uh, Made it so effective that uh, the dispatching station was able to send a train to the section. Everything else was automatic, informing the other station master, uh, conveying the train online, and then uh, taking the train out of section was all automatic. And this uh, also incrementally improved the line capacity. Multiple aspects, as I mentioned, they improved the running of the trains, and therefore the line capacity improved because if the driver uh, doesn't run at full maximum permissible speed in the section, then also the line capacity is lost. And most importantly, last but not the least, is the uh, the control center, the centralized traffic control, which also improves them efficiently. But coming to very specific requirement of line capacity in uh, in this section, we first of all, in the case of absolute block system, on double line or multiple line, <coughs> multiple line section, we introduced the concept of intermediate block signaling. <coughs> Now this, what the purpose was to instead of sending only one train, which was the concept in absolute block system, we were now able to send two trains in the section by splitting the block into two by the by means of a signal, means of signal which was called intermediate block signal. And later on, as the capacity requirement increased further, where we went in for automatic block signaling to further reduce the headway in the section. And so, in this very same section, now you can uh, have four trains or three trains or five trains running. Uh, one after the other at a headway of six minutes. This headway is much smaller in the case of our uh, suburban section or metro system. This is much smaller. So now I'll just highlight how we, how the entire thing is. When we open a section, open a section, the number of trains in a, in a day will be hardly three or four or even less. So there was no need of any signaling anything. There was a method of uh, giving a paper uh, authority to the driver. 
that you are you are the you, and there was only one train so that is the one train only system which is called the as the trains increased to five to six or maybe up to seven to eight then the, there was a method of uh, <coughs> uh, having a station at both the ends and uh, these station at both the ends were able to link on a morse line paper line clear working on which the morse code was exchanged and they were able to give the take the line clear and one train was sent that is how the system of absolute block working emerged with paper line clear initially later on we had as i mentioned token working when the block section lengths were of the order of 15 to 20 kilometers we had a token working the capacity went on increasing then we went uh, and for uh, as the train increases you had to have uh, certain trains waiting in the, for example in the case of uh, if the number of trains are five or six and there are two trains waiting at uh, at uh, station a how will that other train go out from coming from c so there has to be an additional loop and therefore therefore the concept of additional loop uh, was introduced and with that the capacity incrementally again increased <clears throat> then came the issue of uh, uh, introducing a new crossing station so as the number of trains increased that we have to put a new station and this new station was able to provide additional capacity and because now we had many more lines available many more sections available to put their trains into the section and you were able to handle that many trains uh, this was a, a very very useful for the purpose of up to 20 trains you were able to or maybe 25 trains now further increment in, in, in increase in uh, line capacity was necessary and then at that stage we went in for tokenless block working then after this, if the capacity is further required to be increased, then the only option is to go for doubling. And that uh, we have the double line, typical double line block system and lock and block. Uh, there's an up line, there's a down line. There's no problem of uh, crossing. Uh, the trains move steadily in one direction, one after the other. In case of precedence, you've got only one loop available. You can have precedence at that. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, that the other option was the BPSC with block panel further improve the line capacity. This is how the IBS, uh, which I mentioned earlier, IBS emerged and uh, IBS was able to put uh, trains uh, into the section. <clears throat> and uh, the last, uh, the bottom portion is the automatic signal. We have multiple automatic signals in the section uh, linked to track circuits and track sections. So you could have three, four trains or more in that section. So this is what, what I mentioned that IBS splits the block section into two sections, allowing two trains uh, at a, a sh slightly shorter way and automatic signaling is still required if the headway is to be further reduced. Now this, uh, when you reduce the headway on the same line, then the problem emerges is of safety because the, now the number of trains in the block sections are more and uh, <coughs> the uh, total block operation time has been totally eliminated. The time available for reacting or acting is very, very low and therefore uh, the, uh, there has to be some method of working on it. And that is what emerged. This is a typical automatic signaling uh, four aspects of the situation, how the signal aspects change when the train moves. Mm, this emerged in, this led to the emergence of the TPWS. Because TPWS means you cannot, you cannot pass the signal thread. Even if you, the driver makes a mistake, the driver sleeps or driver is inert, you will not be allowed to pass a signal danger. We will talk about it in more detail. And uh, with automatic signaling also, we have uh, uh, TPWS available on each signal and that uh, ensure that uh, you still do not have a collision in spite of the fact that the trains are running at a close headway. Uh, you, you, are see, uh, you can see one infill bullies. This is for the purpose of improving the line capacity, which we will explain when we talk about TPWS. Now, this is a typical uh, uh, control chart of Ghaziabad Aligarh section. Now, you, you can imagine that what is the situation today? The situation is the number of trains have increased substantially. And uh, you, the green trains are the trains which are good trains. And the red trains are the high speed mail express, uh, semi high speed mail express trains or uh, mail express trains. Now, you look at uh, the, uh, the arrow, you, there are a number of green trains stable. Now, this is what is the problem. This is what is the problem and this problem has to be tackled and uh, for this purpose uh, we have to go in for uh, uh, centralized traffic control and train management system and this is only to, to give the viewers uh, a view of how complex and this is a this is the chart only for eight hours there's only an eight hours chart which is so complex now the situation is that you we and we believe that every hour there should be six trains each way but you can see that the number of trains each way is hardly three or four. 
and that is because of manual local operation and not uh, centralized uh, automatic operations. So that's for automatic signaling with centralized traffic control and TPWS is required, and that this is concludes the con focus on focus on uh, line capacity along with safety. <laughs> Now I come to that gap, which I mentioned right in the beginning. There is a gap. The aspect of the line side signals and uh, the ind indirect interface with the driver. There's a gap between the signals, the local pilot and the dispatcher. Now three kinds of gaps are there. One is between the, C one, one is between the controller and the, and the site. Now controller today is talking to the station master. And this indirect way of talking led to one of the accidents. In fact, uh, uh, there was an accident at Meerthal uh, way back in 2004 or four or, four or five, wherein uh, <laughs> there was a total break of communication between two stations and there was trains waiting at both the ends and both the, both the station masters did not follow the required procedure and just sent the, both the trains. This was done because they did not talk to the central controller. The central controller knows the trains are on both the sides and therefore this is one of the major gap which, which has to be plugged which is not today's subject, that is a separate subject altogether. The second one is another kind of uh, <coughs> gap, which is between the local pilot and the controller. Today, the local pilot and the controller don't talk, cannot talk to each other. Uh, the present system of uh, VHF communication is only uh, limited to the stations, station master only. So the local pilot has to talk to the, uh, uh, the train controller because he knows, the person knows that there is a, a derailment of another train or there's another obstruction in the section which he can convey to the local pilot and this kind of an accident can also be prevented. This can also help the local pilot in getting assistance or reporting an accident or asking for a, uh, some kind of a troubleshooting uh, support from the controllers. Now we are coming to the last point, which is the subject of the day. That is the interface of line track side signal aspects and indicator boards from local pilot is prone to mistakes. That means the whatever local pilot is seeing in terms of signal aspect, and he has made mistakes in the past. And this is the, this is the gap which has to be plugged by automatic train protection system, which we are terming here as train protection warning system. This particular aspect will be totally taken care of. You will be able to prevent cases of signal passing a danger. You'll be able to prevent collision and you will also be able to prevent uh, uh, derailments at high speed because the TPWS system or the automatic train protection system ensures a proper braking curve and under say safe uh, breaking limit of the defined section. Now this is the gap. If you look at the typical signal train, train control command and flow interface area, this is slightly more technical. Now the today's situation is that you show a signal to the driver, right? And this is the gap which is, which is missing here. This ga gap is from the signal to the local pilot. This gap is being bridged by pro providing a movement authority through the ATP system, automatic train protection system, which is straight away given on the cab, inside the cab to the driver. And if the, the driver does not, if the driver does not <coughs> respond to it, or he's inert or he's inactive, in that case, there'll be automatic application of brakes. The brakes, the, the brakes have to be reset. It is counted and the, uh, the local pilot has to explain why this has happened. And this precisely is the area of our work. This, from this emerges everything now. Whether you talk of for, for headway control, whether you talk of high speed running, whether you talk of uh, more number of trains in the section, whether you talk of for precise uh, stopping, especially in the case of metro systems, this emerges from this particular gap. This gap has to be plugged properly. <clears throat> now I come to the issue, how this uh, particular gap, we tried to do something right in 1924-25. Can you imagine? 1924-25, we had the first trials of automatic train protection system on Indian railways in the British times. That, is, that was called the Great Indian Peninsula Railway. Later on, it became the Central Railway, and now it is called the West Central Railway. There was a device, uh, which is something like, a, they call it crocodile. Uh, there's some kind of metal strip, uh, you can see in the blue arrow. This uh, metal strip actually is uh, connected, uh, when the locomotive passes over it, it gets uh, a feed uh, con conveyed to the onboard system. And there was an automatic system in case uh, when the signal is red or when the signal is green, the, the, the supply is extended to the onboard and that supply holds because there's a push button here, you can see in the, in the, in the sketch. 
the, 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 at the moment that pushes the, the, the engine shoe, what is marked as engine shoe, but the moment it is pushed up, there will be a break in the circuit and that, that will lead to the solenoid releasing the vacuum and the train will stop. So whenever there's a green, this power supply is extended by the, by, by the, this, uh, this brush and this extra control uh, holds the path for that purpose. But if in case it is red, then no power supply is extended. And in that case, uh, uh, the vacuum is destroyed. In fact, uh, to the, 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 there were only vacuum trains at that time. There were no air brake trains, uh, which are now, nowadays there. But uh, those vacuum were destroyed and vacuum once destroyed, the train has to come to a stop. And that was the first trial. Unfortunately, this after this trial, uh, not much was done because this particular metal, uh, uh, I'll, say, I'll say metal strip, which is almost like a 12 to 14 feet in long, in length, and it is of a, a, a conductive metal, was getting damaged or stolen. And therefore, uh, not much of an headway was made. So, <clears throat> and even in the, after independence, when the Shah Nawaz Railway Accident Inquiry Committee they, uh, focused, they focused only on the basics of signaling, which I mentioned earlier, that right from track circuits, uh, basic block working, interlocking, level crossing gate interlocking, and IBS. So they focused only on that, but almost <clears throat> there were other committees on ATP, Automatic Trend Production, Kuzuru Committee in 1962 to mention, which I mentioned about 130 collisions in 1961. Please adopt automatic train control equipment. Next again, Wanchu Committee said the same thing. Lines on which 100 kmph or above is there, please uh, have automatic train control. Again, Secret Committee 1978 said the same, put the automatic warning system on the, on the trunk route at least. Karna Committee again in 1998 after the gas accident said to provide train protection warning system on the entire Indian railways. And much later in 2012, Kakotkar Committee much very recently talked about uh, ETCS on <coughs> entire uh, golden quadrilateral and diagonals of Indian railways. That is the busy routes, but on the branch lines, there will be other systems. So this is how it evolved. <clears throat> first, uh, in fact, after 50 years of the first trial, 1925 and 1975, after 50 years of the first trial, the second trial was taken up between Howrah and Mughalsarai. And this first trial was of advanced auxiliary warning and stop system on Eastern Railway. This again failed miserably because that the, this was based on track magnets, which actually I think many of the people who are living in Mumbai area know about the track magnet, the, the same track magnet when it was tried in the Eastern Railway, failed miserably because this was the, the local conditions were difficult. The local conditions did not support this kind of a uh, track magnet, which had a lot of copper inside it. So the, they were stolen or damaged and therefore it failed. But the very same system, of, which is called the auxiliary warning system uh, on Mumbai, Western and Central succeeded and, and it continues to work even till today. <coughs> After the gas accident in the year 1999, I think uh, there was a, big hue and cry and then Konkan Railway came up with the concept of anti-collision device trials, which continued up to the year 2007-8 and thereafter uh, that also, uh, because there were a lot of uh, spurious uh, functionality based uh, problems, uh, which uh, were, which were. in fact, uh, if you are the people who are in this uh, industry, you know that if there's a false positive, false positive means it's a wrong, wrong, wrong breaking. Then in that case, uh, the system becomes uh, and the system cannot be depended upon. And therefore, anti-collision device uh, failed. But uh, anti-collision device and later on the train protection warning system. Let me tell you train protection warning system, what uh, this world has come here for the first time. The train protection warning system, what we do in India is basically based on European train control system level one. This is the system which has been installed in three sections in India. Delhi Agra section, uh, it's about uh, 200 kilometers, Chennai Gumidi Pundi section, about 50 kilometers, and Kolkata Metro, 25 kilometers. These three systems were the working system in the country. And these three systems were based on uh, uh, the concept of UNISIG, uh, European ERTMS, ETCS. Now, <laughs> when this was happening uh, between two, uh, 2007 and 13, uh, in between what emerged was this uh, ETCS uh, was uh, perceived to be very expensive because it was not made in India. It was all, uh, uh, most of the equipment was getting imported and uh, local engineering, uh, in spite of best effort, was not uh, really focused on through skill development. Therefore, <clears throat> uh, in the year 2007 and uh, I think 2008, Mr. Mansukani will be talking later. He, uh, along with his, uh, his senior, Mr. Mahesh Mangal, they 
came in with the concept of train collision avoidance system, which they now call as indigenous train control system, which we'll talk about it later. So in the year 2008, those specifications emerged. And that in the very same year, they were able to finalize uh, uh, some kind of a pilot work to be done on South Central Railway, which uh, in the year 2009, they were able to uh, start the work. And that has how it uh, emerged. Meanwhile, uh, there was a concept uh, paper in the railway board that the modern train control system should be installed countrywide. And the strategy was the, that uh, TCAS will be on on um, branch lines and ETCS level two, level two for the purpose of uh, high speed and line capacity. Uh, these functionalities that at that stage were not available with the TCAS, they, and that was the strategy and that was evolved. And <clears throat> last point is about the Delhi Metro, the distance to go, which came for the first time in 2002. This is a completely a different kind of system altogether, but it is a track circuit based, but there is a method of for that gap, how to get the information about the gap. So that gap has to be bridged. And now more recently, the communication-based train control system with the gap is now radio-based. So this is how the systems have been evolving in India. I think this we have covered in, in the previous slide about Kunjuru and Wanchu committee and these initiatives we have covered. <clears throat> this also I mentioned about Havada Mughal Sarai, because of theft, it was damaged. <clears throat> Now the last portion of this, uh, the bottom portion of the slide, you can see that uh, AWS, so when after it became successful in 1984-85, uh, it became started becoming obsolete in the year 2000 or so. Because normally for, for 14, 15 years, uh, most of the manufacturer support with uh, engineering support and spare part support. And therefore RDSO launched another initiative, which is called the Advanced Auxiliary Warning System, which is totally made in India and is uh, now, handling the entire activity on the system. Now I'll come to one by one to each of the systems which we have done, which, which were slightly more successful. Auxiliary warning system, uh, which is in, used in Central and Western Railway uh, suburban sections is basically an overlay of the signaling. Overlay means it is an additional layer over the signaling system, which is the normal signal uh, track circuit points, level crossings and everything. It is an overlay on the signals and that it takes information from the signal and then passes on to the driver uh, through uh, uh, some kind of a track magnet. That track magnet uh, is sensed by the engine magnet uh, when it passes over it and it is able to get the condition of the signal ahead, condition or aspect of the signal ahead, that what is the condition of the signal ahead. And then if it is a signal which is red, they'll be given, in, in, if it is red or yellow, he'll be given in some kind of a beep and then in case he doesn't respond, then there will be automatic operation of brakes. This is a brief block diagram of the system. Uh, this uh, uh, entire thing is uh, <coughs> from the signal through an optocoupler. Optocoupler means we cannot interfere with the basic interlocking and basic signaling. This has to be a totally a system which, is, which does not intrude or interfere with the main signal system. So it takes information from there pass gives it to the track magnet in the form of a combination of frequencies. And then on the other engine track magnet uh, picks it up and then on the on, onboard processor is programmed accordingly that if you get such and such frequency combination and what has to be done in case, and for different combination, what action has to be taken and what indication has to be given. And in the case of the driver not acting, then what has to be done? The speed sensing is done. There is a speed sensor available, which is a techo generator or techo beater. And then the braking control is also there. Some of the components I've already mentioned about track magnet, which is uh, placed between the rails. You can see the photograph here. This track magnet is, uh, the, is, is designed in a manner that it doesn't get damaged by a hanging part. You can see the uh, shape of the track magnet. There's a, slight, a big ramp in the direction of the, and uh, from which the movement takes, can take place. So in case some hanging part is there, it gets def deflected. This uh, track magnet is connected to the signal. And it has got three chambers, which has got different kinds of coils, which are tuned to different frequencies. And the track magnet also accordingly tuned to different kinds of a frequency. There are two types of track magnet. One is the dynamic, or uh, which is, has got a varying information. And one is the fixed track magnet. They are called type A and type B. And, uh, <laughs> the, other, and the other, the, the combination of frequencies which are used are 2800 hertz, 3600 hertz, 4400 hertz, 5200 hertz. 
6000 hertz and 6800 and 7600 hertz these are the frequencies and they are they are superimposed on a carrier of 100 kilowatts and on that they are picked up by the onboard system optocoupler as i mentioned it has to be it has to pick up the signal from the this is optocoupler coupler photograph this picks up the uh, the signal from the conditional signal whether it is yellow double yellow green or red and then accordingly it is conveys to the <clears throat> Similarly, the onboard uh, systems have got onboard uh, cab display uh, unit, which is uh, for the purpose of uh, braking, for the purpose of isolating it. In case uh, you find that the, the frequent braking, then you can even isolate the system. And uh, this, uh, there's an indication panel which conveys to the driver what uh, what 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 his response is supposed to be. <clears throat> so you can have have a look at this. That uh, the this onboard uh, uh, logic has to be very carefully designed. And this particular design, uh, I, I will uh, I will suggest that uh, if people are interested in that area, then they can always uh, submit their requirements. We can work work out, work out specifically how the track magnet is fixed, how the onboard logic is uh, programmed, and what is the role of uh, each of the tuned circuit. Well, F1, F2 means what, F2, F3 means what, and F different frequency combination means what. That can be done. Though. So I can only talk about the main component, the onboard cap system, the engine magnet, which we have talked about, taco generator senses the speed. Isolating uh, unit is necessary in case the AWS is frequently failing. So you have to isolate it. Brake actuating unit is purpose in case uh, the driver is over speeding or not stopping, then brake actuating unit or action gets actuated. And the CPU is the heart of the system, which, uh, which uh, gives buzzer, which gives alarms, which gives uh, indications of different kinds red yellow and blue indicators which have which are defined meanings uh, that can be seen in the rule book of the motorman <clears throat> these are the components in more detail uh, you can see the photograph uh, controller cab equipment and this is the driving cab indication board which which, uh, uh, which you can see very clearly in front of you engine magnet more closer view track magnet optocoupler <clears throat> these, are, these are real photographs of the bombay suburban section now what happened <laughs> these aws as i mentioned earlier that uh, they that that became started becoming obsolete the parts were not available and uh, the oem had stopped them uh, i think supporting this they had mentioned that we will continue for two more years or three more years and that time was made use of by rdso to develop those very components indigenously and the main component basically was uh, the track magnet which was getting damaged and had to be replaced time and again and the engine magnet and uh, good, it is a good thing that, that RDSO was able to develop sources in India and they are now supporting this uh, advanced auxiliary warning system. Now, <clears throat> what Central and Western Railway have now planned is to migrate from this system, which is the auxiliary warning system, to a communication-based train control system on which reports are available now. And they are now, I think, the, for phase one of that project has been have approved. And I think MRVC is working on that uh, because uh, there's no other method of controlling the headway in the case of Bombay Servant section, even with the, uh, or, or this uh, automatic signaling and uh, 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 warning system, auxiliary warning system, we have been able to achieve a headway of three minutes uh, during peak time. But if you want to go in for 120 seconds, then with the many other things have to be seen, or uh, uh, even if you want to go to uh, in two and a half minutes, a lot of things have to be done. In fact, uh, I started my career from Bombay Division in 1981, and uh, we have done the re-signaling of the section to make from three aspect automatic signaling to four aspect automatic signaling, just to improve headway, relocating the signals, making shorter uh, tra track sections so that the headway can be improved. And that uh, activity in the year 1982-83 has helped us in handling traffic for some time. But now the time has come that a lot of inputs have to go into because much more precise control of a train is required now. And that is possible through either distance to go or through communication-based train control, which are being deployed on metro systems. Then came the anti-collision device. And this device actually was a novel concept. This device uh, was based on GPS. And this uh, GPS was, uh, was having two purposes. One was uh, it was give, give the location of the train. And second one was there was a patented uh, logic uh, defined by Konkan Railway, which is called the deviation count theory. The deviation count theory was able to uh, 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 change the train ID if the train moves from the main line into the loop line. 
because the train IDs have been given to each of the lines, main line uh, ID number 17, then 18, 19, and 20. So if the train is on 17 and it goes into loop line number 18, the train ID has to change and this has to change automatically. So the onboard ACD device, the local ACD device was able to decode this through this logic, which I'm calling the calling it the deviation counter logic, which was able to detect it. Now the concept of ACD was whether quite, uh, I think straightforward. The concept was when two locomotives, in fact, this is a radio based system, the location is now known and you are coming into each other and they are continuously transmitting uh, in uh, their location and speed and direction. Now, if there's, a, if there's a train coming from the other direction, then you'll find that if the ID is the same, if the ID is different, there's no issue, the train will pass, in the case of double line, they will pass through. But if the ID is the same, if the, both the ACDs which are approaching each other, both the locomotive ACDs which are approaching each other, have the same train ID, in that case, they will collide. And therefore, with, before, within a range of three kilometers zone, this particular thing, uh, actuates the the onboard uh, ACD unit and which applies brake in case there is an approaching without without interfering with the drivers working without uh, uh, disturbing him it will just tell him that there is a collision kind of situation emerging and please <clears throat> and automatically the brakes will be applied now this particular ACD system was having no interface with the signaling system. It had no interface with the signaling system and it was also classified as a non-signaling system. But when we went in for a larger trial for Northeast Frontier Railway, we found that the number of, un uh, un uh, uh, number of uh, spurious breakings, I'll call them, spurious breakings were so high that uh, the, the user department said that we cannot afford to have so many breakings because you have to time and again reset the train and in the process of each breaking was disturbing the line capacity and the operations drastically. And this is what I mentioned was the false positives which are there. These false positives cannot be accepted. And therefore uh, in the year 2007-8, this is a typical uh, di sketch diagram, an indicative diagram, which shows, uh, you can see that there are level crossing gate ACDs also. And from that, for the level crossing ADs, ACDs unmanned as well as NAM manned, they were able to this approach law, approach warning was uh, was getting conveyed. And in the case of unmanned AC level crossing gate, uh, in case the, you are able to provide a proper gate closing switch, then it was able to also convey back to the driver that uh, the gate is still open. So <clears throat> wherever it is a manned interlock gate, there's no problem because the signal is linked to the uh, the 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 the, the, the <clears throat> the ACD will, will be able to perceive that uh, situation that the man level crossing gate, the LC gate uh, ACD will transmit its condition. I'm open. And if it is open, the, the, the local pilot will not be able to uh, come and uh, pass through the level crossing gate. Because the local, the level crossing ACD is transmitting that I am open. I am, I, have, I have not allowed you to come. So that information goes to the locomotive ACD and then accordingly. It does it. But there is also a lot of, uh, because it's all this software based system, we were able to play with the system in a manner that uh, this, this, since this was affecting traffic also, we thought of uh, uh, slowing down the train, especially in the case of level crossing. Instead of bringing it to a stop, we uh, thought of slowing down because that was, that, uh, that was able to give enough time to the gate pen at man gates and at the unmanned gate to, 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 to vehicles to get off. And uh, if you crawl to the gate, then you, the, the accident kind of situation was prevented to a large extent. Anyway, this is what is the uh, inter-ACD radio communication, which uh, is very com uh, communicated. The, the GPS data comes from the top and uh, the UHF data, they, they all work in the UHF band and uh, the, the location and direction and the speed were communicating to the, and the train ID was getting con uh, conveyed. And in case the, the collision type situation is was emerging, <clears throat> there was a stoppage. Now I come to some certain, uh, how, how did we move into the concept of ETCS and, uh, and uh, <clears throat> TCAS? Uh, before that we have, uh, oh, somebody was, uh, some, some initiative were taken that why don't we use the train protection warning system, which is the UK system which is the UKTP rules. UKTP rules is a totally different kind of system, which is basically, is, and they had, they had deployed the system in the entire UK because of their, their 
controlled environment, uh, lower, uh, shorter uh, braking distances and uh, shorter consists. But they had problems with <coughs> freight trains there, so they 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 had to I think have multiple multiple devices in the field <coughs> to to control all that. So in in the year 1999, there was a regulation uh, in the UK uh, rail, that is the network rail or at that time British rail. And they mentioned that uh, the, this has to be done because they had a bad collision. Now, what happens is the, the objective of this device is only to stop at red, nothing else. The, the only objective of this is to prevent SPAD. And this is what uh, uh, was achieved by deploying the train protection warning system uh, on British Rail, where they used uh, two devices. These are two, um, I can see two devices here. The <coughs> OSS and the TSS. OSS means overspeed sensor. So there was the arming the de device and the triggering device and there was the onboard antenna which was able to receive the signal. Arming to trigger, <coughs> you can measure the time and that measure the time indicates to you whether you're uh, at what speed are you going. And the time from that place to the TSS, that is the stopping uh, uh, arming, arming and stopping device. They were able, <coughs> they, it, was, it was to be ensured that if that the time is less than that, normal time should have been like this, but the person is, the driver has come faster than that, then there'll be an application of brake and the train will be brought to a stop. <clears throat> but this is the trackside equipment, which is called lower speed sensor. It's located at a position determined by the line speed and gradient, and it's called the arming loop. That uh, This is arming the onboard to actuate. And the next one is the trigger loop. That's called the train stop sensor, where it is about, it, it, it triggers the stopping process in case the driver is coming faster than necessary. And that uh, calculation was done by the onboard microcomputer. So this is a typical layout. You can see the distances. Uh, the, the distances have to be very carefully done. Now, this is the problem in the Indian context. The moment you start putting this arming transmitters and triggering transmitters uh, uh, on the track, and these distances are very vital for measurement of timing, or measurement of speed. In that case, uh, this cannot be enforced in the Indian context because uh, of many other reasons. Local conditions is one, but uh, that apart, the operating conditions are like that, that you have got uh, a train which is an EMU with a braking distance of 350 meters to a train which has got a braking distance of 1.8 kilometers. So you will have to have multiple OSS overspeed sensor systems and, and that would, made a, have, would have made a system very complex and therefore this was discarded and not agreed. Second thing was the, the, more, the, the more convincing parameter was this there's only one company in the world which makes this. And this is what was not acceptable, acceptable to, the, to the railway and therefore this was discarded. The other system which was we had investigated was the incremental train control system, which is again GPS based, but this is the fully signaled system on as an overlay plus it has it is already working in many parts of the world today. This system uh, was uh, investigated in the year 2006 by the board and uh, I, I, I have also done foot plating on this locomotive and I could see the response of the driver. There's only one driver there. The response of the driver <coughs> Uh, on, on the on the cab, the moment he entered the territory of incremental train control system, he was so relieved that now he knows that the train is under control of a system which is an additional help and assistance to him. And in case he overspeeds or if in case he is not able to assess the proper braking mechanism and is not able to stop, that uh, onboard system will take care. So this is a system which is totally again GPS based. Here actually, what has had the, the system is that you have got uh, uh, some you got the servers at each station and they can communicate uh, on, a, on a UHF radio and they again have a GPS location. Now the GPS location, as you know, all of us know the GPS uh, has some errors in this, uh, in, the, in the location determination. Therefore, they, they have devised a concept called DGPS. DGPS means differential GPS, which is based on the concept that uh, there are certain fixed point on the network where the different, where you take the signal from that and also take the signal on the train and then and then whatever is the error at that time of the day because there will be error in the GPS.
What has happened? Just a second, I think. Uh, what happened? Sir, you are audible, but the screen is blank. What happened to the screen? <laughs> uh, just a moment, sir. Sir, please try to share it. Share the screen once more, once again, sir. Probably it should work. Yes, sir, it's working. Speed is not visible to me. Sir, it's a wide screen right now. It's wide screen, sir. Yeah. 